Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today we're going to be listening to Valley of the Queens from the Arion universe. Now, Arion isn't really a set band. Rather, it's like a collective of musicians. And Arian Lukasen is the person responsible for bringing those musicians together. He writes for different singers with roles specifically in mind. So in this particular concert, I understand that we have Flor Janssen, Annika van Giersbergen, and Marcella Bovio. I love Flor. Uh, the little bit I've heard of Annika has been amazing. I'm really excited to hear her more. I've never heard Marcella, so it's going to be a really fun first time reaction to her. I also understand that all of Arion's albums are rock operas. So I'm going to be taking a look at the storytelling aspect in particular. Now, big shout out to Roberto from Patreon. He gave me a ton of background information on this that really helped set me up today to record this for you. So thank you so much, Roberto. Let's get to it. sound good oh that's such luscious sound oh i i loved the portamento that floor did in the middle of that oh i mean you know i, I love her portamentos in particular they they are so uh vulnerable and um and they have a nice cushion of the sound it's really beautiful um i was expecting more of a rock beginning because i was thinking rock opera right and this is fun. This feels like it's much more um, folk instead. But it also gives a lot of room for their voices to expand and have like a lot more domey kind of resonance. A lot of times when you have like really hard instruments going, um, if they're punching a lot of sound, the voice will try and be a lot more narrow and laser through it. And in this, instead, you have a lot more, um, uh, just a, a more opportunity for warmer resonance. So that's really lovely to hear their voices. And I also really like the instrument. I, I think it's, I want to say maybe an alto recorder, but I'm not sure. Um, it looks like a very large recorder. It's probably more of an ethnic instrument from somewhere. So let me know in the comments below what instrument that actually is, the flute-like one that he's playing. And I want to go back and listen to this a little bit more. It was beautiful. <laughs> Annika's voice has got so much forward resonance and theme to it. She's cutting a little. It looked like she had some problem with her mic maybe at the beginning. It looked like she was playing with something from behind her back. Not sure what it was. Listen to the way she goes down to this lowest note. She's got this really great cut in it and this um, that like shimmer on top. I like it. Close my eyes. with Marcella on the bottom harmony and then she went up above floor that was beautiful I, the harmonies are really well written in this they're not really usual okay um we're gonna listen to that one more time I swear I'm gonna stop less
it is really, truly glorious to have these voices together. Oh, uh, I, one of the things that I learned about this was that it was originally written as a solo just for the character, the Egyptian, which Annika played. And I guess it was rearranged then to be uh, for this trio of ladies. And it sounds like most of the time there's only two voices, so it's sometimes more of a duet, but I think I, we've heard a couple of times when there's all three together too. Um, I, I'm really interested by how well Annika manages to continue cutting with her voice while still having this dome above that makes it have that smooth, shimmery sound. Loving that. And I love, love, love the expression in Flora's voice. She has so much expression in the top end of her voice. It, uh, and it's also really easy for her to have clear pronunciation up there. Hmm. I shouldn't say easy. Clear pronunciation on high notes is not easy. I would rather say she's very skilled at that. So it doesn't sound difficult, but I'm guessing she put a lot of work into it. And Marcella's voice sounds really pure, but I think she can do way, way, way more with it. Okay, I'm gonna keep going now. that he did off the whistle there at the end. Uh, I don't know who that is. Is that Aryan? I don't know. I don't think so. I've seen a couple pictures of him and this guy looks different, but I've also never seen him live. So it might be Aryan. Um, whoever he is, he's really great. And I love this choice of, oh, like this whistle recorder sound. I will say it's like, it almost sounds like the whistle from Titanic. I'm so sorry if that brought back, back bad memories for you. But yes, it sounds a little bit like that. Um, I think it really gives this a flavor, uh, like a timeless flavor with the idea of an Egyptian. You have these kind of parallel harmonies that are a little, they sound like they're not the normal ones that we would hear. Um, and if you take that and you add this whistle that feels like it's derived from some sort of folk music, um, it gets a feeling of it's just something exotic, something from a faraway land. And I like this combination a lot for evoking uh, a story. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Catch that transition. trio of their voices there at the end. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the reasons we know it's live and it hasn't been dubbed or something, there's always people out there that think, oh, well, it must have been dubbed. It's too good to be real. But they do come in at slightly different times here at the end uh, when they are no longer on like a steady tempo. Um, and they are supposed to have like a retardando, so they're supposed to slow down and then just basically look at each other for when to come in on the word the, I think. So there was a little bit of different starts on the word the, but they got it together on the k of queen. Um, I really love, there was like a little, I think Floyd did a little slide up to, as she was tuning that harmony, which I think is a really gorgeous effect for a trio of voices. Let's go back and catch that ending again. It's so pretty and the song is too short, so I just need a little bit more.
pretty. It's so pretty. Also, I love that you have brunette, blonde, and redhead. What a beautiful visual of these three ladies as well. Just what a beautiful, beautiful song. Really, truly written for luscious voices together. I think that Aryan did an amazing job of writing for the three of them. You know, that wasn't a wow kind of song where I thought, how did they sing that high note or that low note or this crazy scream? Instead, it was just really, truly beautiful and simple in its beauty. Uh, even some of the harmonies had like a little almost archaic motion to them, which was really, just really gorgeous to hear these voices sing it together. So it was thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. I'd really like to hear more Arian, especially because I understand it's supposed to be like rock sometimes, and this didn't sound like rock at all. So I'm kind of curious where this whole rock opera might go, where it might develop to. So sound off in the comments below. Let me know if there's any other Arian you would like to hear. And also let me know what other artists you'd like to hear as well. I do keep track of those comments and I do do reaction videos to the ones that are the most requested. So please keep those coming and vote for the ones that you want the most too. Also, please, if you don't want to miss out on live premieres, subscribe, turn the bell on for notifications. I'm here Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. And I also have a Patreon where I do twice weekly live video chats. All that brings us to one of the best things I like to talk about these days. I have a huge party coming up. It is free to attend. It's on Friday, October 2nd. We're celebrating 100,000 subscribers. You should come and join me. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to be drinking mimosas. It's just going to be a great time. So I hope to see you there and maybe also somewhere else soon. Thanks.